Dropping to the back, engine changes for Kevin LePage and Kirk Shelmerdine. They're both back there in uh, provisional land anyway. And we have a list of failed to qualify. Big group of cars here. Seven cars came here, attempted to qualify, could not run fast enough. They're scheduled to wave the green flag in two more laps. You see they've still got some of the jet dryers out on the track, and they're going to try and make sure the surface is in perfect condition to start this race, so we might get a couple of extended pace laps. Meantime, we head to pit road and check with Dave Burns. Time to talk about some other drivers, Alan. How about Travis Quapple? He's a NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series driver who races for Bang Racing. Finished 21st in the race here yesterday after leading 61 laps. Well, he got a hall pass for one race from his owners to come race a Penske Nextel Cup car, and he's made the most of it. Qualifying fifth here today, Travis looks like he's on his way to greater and better things in this whole racing thing. But for now, he's a Truck Series driver making the most of a Nextel Cup start. Matt? Hey, Bobby Labonte is a driver hoping for some good things to happen for a change. He hasn't gone to victory lane since Homestead, the season finale in 2003. He finished second here back in the spring, 14 straight weeks without a top 10 finish. But Brandon Thomas, his crew chief, told me the car was very strong during both practice sessions on Saturday. It was great on long runs, and that's what they're hoping they get a lot today. This team is expecting good things today here in Martinsville. He starts 17th. To Marty Snyder. Well, Matt, talk about your challenges. Dell Jarrett starts 32nd today, and we've heard everybody talk about how difficult it is to pass here this weekend at Martinsville. So how's he going to get to the front? Well, Mike Ford told me two ways. Number one, patience, being very careful when he does try to pass someone. And number two, pit stops. When they pit, they're hoping nobody else pits. They're going to do the opposite of what the leaders do. So when the leaders stay out, they're coming down pit road. When they take four, they're going to take two tires until they get to the front, and then they're going to take what they think is a very good car and try and win with it. Bill? Marty Elliott Sadler is having a dream season. Two wins, fourth in the chase, coming into 2004. His best finish in the championship standings, 22nd. Today he wants to flex his muscle in front of his home state fans. Every driver has his own private thoughts coming to the green. Can I make up spots in the chase? Can I pull off the upset? Did I feed the cats this morning? Every man for himself. Elliott Sadler has one thought right now. Win one on his home field. Upstairs, Alan. And we're one lap from the green well we were one lap from the green flag now they've not shown the one to go this time so looks like they're still working for uh, some confirmation for the drivers that the track's ready to go nbcsports.com bp what'd you write this week well we talked about the preview of martinsville and who i felt like might be a winner here this weekend and i've got a little look at uh, some of the drivers i think you should keep an eye on in these final five races in the chase for the next l cup nbcsports.com Here's, a, here's another thing that'll be tough for drivers today, and that's this pit road. And wa wa watch it. Now, see, we didn't show this because we were saving time in Wally's World earlier. Watch when Jeff and Robbie were coming off the track yesterday after we taped their part. Where is it, Robbie? Here's going to be the tricky part, seeing our pit. Where is it? Come around. It's going to be right there. Okay. Front of that oak, where that 18 is. Okay. So, we got to stay ahead of... Uh, Who's behind us? Put something on that wall. Who's behind us? I think Jimmy Johnson is uh, the pit behind him, but he's got a little bit of an opening, and that that's a big help here. These pits are very, very tight, and just, what is that, BP, four feet, five feet? That makes a big difference on this pit lane. Exactly, because otherwise these cars are jammed up no, nose to tail. And if you don't have that opening, it's going to be difficult to get in or get out. Bill says he measured it at six feet. Why didn't I ask Weber? We knew he would have looked it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to know. Yeah, that's did. right. That's, but that six feet makes a big difference. When you swing one of these big cars in those pit stalls, they look big from TV, but trust me, they're very, very tight. Pace cars off. 500 laps on this tight, tough, demanding half-mile track. Trouble lurks around every corner, and the green flag is waving at the start-finish line. Junior didn't get a very good start, but that was a good... I thought Rusty would have tucked down. Yeah, there he goes. Got cleanly through one lap. The 10 car, Scott Riggs, is cut on the outside and just cannot get to the bottom because... Every time he tries to get down there, there's a car in the way. Clear. Oh, Finally. Trouble. Turn two. Joe Nemechek. 
The accordion oh. effect. And Casey Kane got into the left no rear of Gene no Spencer. Go, 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 go. Come wow, Mary Ellen? No. Nope. Now the caution's out. Okay, yeah, we got trouble on the back. That's uh, our 50. Yep. He pulls it in the back now. Todd Bodine with the uh, flat tire and the jam up. Yep. Tough luck there for Todd as he goes behind the wall. Uh, I, I talk about the accordion effect. And, you know, if you've ever played an accordion, how it opens and closes. Well, when it squeezes closed in a line of race cars, here's what happens. See, Nemechek looks like he just lost it off the corner like the car uh, spun around. I think he got hit. Do you think so? Yeah. There's uh, damage on the rear bumper right there, and I believe he got hit by Hermie, Hermie Sadler there. Mm, yeah, see the damage on the rear? See the damage on the left rear. Wait. Barely touched the water barrel. It all starts about four cars ahead of him with Mark Martin, who had a little trouble getting off the corner. Actually, in front of Mark, even. Definitely got hit. Yeah. Caution's out here at Martinsville. We'll be back. Pace cars off. Ryan Newman leads the field to the restart. Now we've got 42 cars strung around this racetrack. Yeah, Newman sees the rear of the field here in about a lap or two. As he goes through three and four, they're just going into one and two right now. The tail end of the field. Todd Bodine, the only driver off. Look at this. There you go. At least three quarters of the racetrack with race cars on it. Tony Stewart, Jeremy Mayfield, that is uh, 12th place. Tony just took it away from Jeremy. Now here comes Brendan Gaughan in the 77. And a lot of the talk this morning was that it's real difficult to get into the corners. And if you get into the corner and you're a little bit loose and you slide up like 12 car of Newman did, then Rusty Wallace will drive underneath him and fill the hole. And take the lead. And, and Wally yesterday in practice, that two car was really, really fast. Marty, what they said about the 12, is he okay? Yeah, he's fine, BP, and this is kind of what they expected. Matt Worland told me this morning the car was actually not that good in practice yesterday, and they knew their teammate Rusty Wallace was much better. They wanted to lead a lap, at least get the five bonus points, and they expected Rusty to go by them. Matt. And when you hear Rusty Wallace say we're not going to make a lot of changes to the car, you know how strong that race car is. They made so few changes yesterday. They surprised everybody, pulling a number of crew chiefs in the garage. Like Marty said, they all pointed to the two car as the guy to beat. Same race car he won with here in April, and he's out front now. Okay, here comes your first patience test of the day. Well, finally Jimmy Spencer said that's too early in the race to be fooling with these guys. Just let them go. Is he going to go down to the inside? No, thank goodness. Jimmy got the damage on the left rear quarter panel or fender in the Nemechek crash on the back. The nine car of Casey Kane ran in the left rear of Spencer. Kevin LePage has just taken his car to the garage. How about Spencer, Dave? Well, they, and they wanted to come in earlier and get that cut off, but it took them two stops to do it. So that's why they were so late getting back to things, and, and that's why they spent so much time in the pits. Yeah, the three laps down right now. Second place, Ward Burton by Ryan Newman. And I talked to Billy Engel, the crew chief, on this zero car this morning, and he was just raving about how well his car was getting around the racetrack. He said, this is the best car he's had at Martinsville since he was working for Ricky Rudd. And we'll remember what happened that day. Ricky Rudd won the race. Here's Ricky. Driving for the Wood Brothers. He's in eighth place. That'd be somebody to keep an eye on. Oh, absolutely. A brand new race car, this 21 car. Trouble, oh, trouble. trouble. Got a couple of them stacked up. Brendan gone. Sterling Marlin, caution flags out. And Sterling's car is not starting. It's damage. not starting. Damage. I don't see much on the front. You better hurry. There okay, finally. Well, Brendan's got some problems. Yeah, primarily the left front tire is flat. And, and these tire pressures are, are so low anyway on the left side. If you barely touch anything, they pop. We can't see what caused the 77 to spin. Actually, I think this, when he did that spin is what popped that tire. Carl Edwards. Oops. Right there. Come on, babe. 
little accordion effect maybe causing that one. And the caution is out for the second time in Martinsville.